year. I don't. I didn't lose any money. It sucks, but it doesn't do anything. This happened because you could do get requests to the Department of Corrections, and the only way that they found out about it was because the person who did it wrote a man file. Then somebody was looking on how to get records, saw his man file to do it, and they had just gotten out of that jail. So they did it. It was a good man file. And then they got all the information of all the officers that worked in the jail. Then they started calling their friends that were getting out and said, hey man, if you give me like 500 bucks, I'll give you that dude who slapped you around the dress. I mean, that's, this is now when, when AppSec becomes physically bad, right? These are the types of examples that the developer here, like, hey, look, you're responsible for like six officers dying last night because you didn't lock that down. That's a lot more real than my personal information is gone. It's, guess what? 300 million people get compromised already? None of your information is personal anymore. You know that. I mean, really, it, it's not. It, it's everywhere. Like anyone in this room probably has their stuff pilfered all over the internet. Except for you, because it's in my backpack. But <laughs> so, so you know, I, I want to see these things get a little bit more realistic, and then you can start looking into other aspects like social engineering, which I don't know why that's all the way up at the top. Um, but social engineering isn't just calling and asking for your password. Uh, social engineering isn't being Kevin Mitnick and typing one into an asterisk server to get admin. That's dumb. I mean, it isn't. It's, that's not what it is. Social engineering is a repeatable process that you can use to manipulate people into divulging information, leaking information. Now, that could mean creating a spy in the organization, which is real easy to do, especially now with all the banking problems. You go to a developer who's making 45 grand a year or a database administrator, right, who's not getting paid well, who's a junior, who's just doing field entry and you start giving them 20 bucks to give them like random tips and information to say, hey, how do you guys do something like this? And have them start working with you to fix your applications because he has experience, he's worked in that environment. And then the more you pay him, the more information you can get. And then one day, pay him a whole bunch of money and say, give me this. Well, after three or four months, they start relying on that money coming in. So they have to take it. And it's really easy to entrap people. All you guys who have done it or either studied it or been taught on how to do it, it's real easy. And especially right now with all the economic crisis that's going on, it's real fun to make. But you can also do things like your client-side attacks. You can embed emails. You can you know, do all of your fun application attacks to use for social engineering. I mean, cross-site scripting and, and cross-framing and things like that, that's great. Why not? You can advertise for me. You can log in for me. I wish I had the bat. Um, that was a bad shot. <laughs> I got two. So, so I'm, now I'm like ready. So one of the best examples that I have for social engineering is uh, this, this guy stole $28 million of diamonds because he was giving the ladies at the front desk chocolate every morning. I mean, like, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Like, I can do a SQL injection and dump a database, but you give somebody a freaking chocolate and you get 120,000 carats of diamonds, that's neat. Sometimes all those idiots that came out passwords and chocolate on Exactly. So it's, it's unbelievable, right? So these, these types of attacks, when, when you look at all these, you can take all the knowledge that you have, you can take this kind of multidisciplinary approach and start looking at your environment from the style of an attacker, not just from a AppSec tester or a physical engineer, all those things. You guys all have the facilities to understand all these areas. All right, fine. Just kill it and I'll deal with it later. So you have the ability to look at all these different things. I, I urge everyone to kind of open their mind when they're looking at security in their environment and try not to be so focused. Because what ends up happening is you create a shield that's this thick and this big, and you get attacked from this way. So it happens. So, so the reason I wanted to talk about this here is sort of, you know, what, what's red teaming in general, and, and why would you want to do it, right? My, my favorite analogy to that, even though it shows up bad on the screen, is how do you know you can put up a fight if you can't take a punch? If you've never gotten hit, how, how can you say that you could withstand it? 
You know, there's lots of people, oh, well, you know, I had a pen test. Well, did the pen test keep everything in scope? Was it, you know, oh, I, I tested the application. Well, did they test the network in front of it? Did they test the network behind it? Did they test all the hosts involved in that? Did they test the people who admin it? I mean, and when I do an app test, I'm going to send emails to the developers and this. Why? Now I can have all the code. I don't even need to touch the app. Like, if you want to see if I can change the application, oh, trust me, there's a lot more ways than just www.mycheesyapplication.com. Right? So a lot of people get lulled into this kind of false sense of security when they, they say, I'm testing a specific piece. Um, red team testing, essentially, uh, military terms of tiger teams and red teams and things like that. It's essentially a full scope test, right? It's, it's how open can I get my mind to attack this environment to be sure that the assets I'm trying to protect are secure. Process for red teaming. Uh, wow, that shows up terrible too. I'm sorry. Um, just like anything else, just like pen testing, just like application security, you can have a very defined process, right? You gather information, you assess what vulnerabilities there are, you select a target within it. After you select that, you start planning for the attack, and then you execute the attack. And once you've executed the attack, you start over again. Okay, there's a lot of people that do this type of work or say that they do this type of work. Um, IBMers in the room, I'm sorry, I'm going to make fun of you. You suck at it. Uh, why? Because there is no process. It's totally based on the tester, and there's no methodology behind it. And there's a lot of people that claim that they can do it, and then they go, oh, yeah, we're going to do a red team test. And what happens? Six out of my seven facilities, somebody walked in the smoking section. <laughs> wow. That's one, one aspect for attack. When you're testing, you want to try and get as much as you can as many times as you can. So process of doing those attacks, again, you know, we kind of talk about the information gathering, being able to use methods to research the environment. And you know, I, I had this talk a couple days ago, and, and I was talking about it last night. Um, I spend more time on information gathering and testing than I do in testing, ever, in any environment. Because there's a lot of people that go out and they just launch all their tools and their attacks and you know, create a billion amounts of traffic and all this other stuff. And it's useless. Because half the things that they're launching aren't even for that system, aren't even for the service, aren't even close to the service level that they're trying to look at. The same thing goes for these types of attacks. I mean, the more information that you get, the more pinpointed and more executed your attacks are going to be. I mean, because when you're looking at it, the attacker has all the time in the world to profile you. If you're just looking at it in a period of a test and saying, oh, well, my project plan says that we have to have this done in you know, 10 days, I only have two days to do information gathering. So get good information. Once you're able to do that, you're able to really stave off in vulnerability assessing of any of these types of vulnerabilities, whether it's electronic, whether it's physical, whether it's inherent, whether it's social. You can really pinpoint those. So vulnerability assessment is real quick. Yes, that's there. Great. You usually don't even have to run tools if you do enough information gathering, right? I don't. I don't have to figure out what vulnerabilities are on, you know, an Apache if I have the entire version. I can look that up. I don't. I don't need a scanner to go run traffic against the box. Plan for it. Execute the attack. Always get in, get out. The the big problem that I see with a lot of testing in all aspects, whether it's web, physical, red team, any of that stuff, is that people get in. And then they want to hang out while they're in forever. Why? You've materialized exactly what you're looking 